Well, hi, my name is Jim. This is my wife, Sherry, and uh, we're here to share with you our miracle story. And my story with Christ began a long time ago. In 1980, I was baptized. My father baptized me at the Pittsfield Church of Christ. I was married for 27 years. Um, we, we attended the uh, Augusta Church of Christ for years, but there was there was I had some I had some problems. I mean, I, I'm an alcoholic. And some, we grew apart. Um, I, I my relationship with the Lord suffered first, and that's usually what happens when when you're doing something that that takes you out of your own mind. That that was a that was a casualty of of some of these decisions that you make and. Uh, so I was divorced and I was alone. When I dealt with Christianity or I came in contact with Christianity or Christians, um, it never seemed to be in the best light. Every single time I seemed to, to run into someone, it felt like this battlefield and it felt very hard hitting and demanding and you know you had this list of things that you weren't supposed to do and that was it. Um, I never did hear about um, God's love for us. I pretty much railed against Christianity my entire adult life, probably from the time I was 18 till now. Eventually I left San Antonio, I moved to Austin, I was attending school in Austin, um, I met my ex-husband, uh, we got married young, we got married you know, up 22 years old or so, um, we were married for about 17 years. Um, eventually we grew apart and the marriage dissolved. So now at 40 years old, I'm a single mom, kind of out there having fun, you know, kind of going through a second childhood and going out and drinking and smoking. So by that time, Jim and I had met and we'd gotten married, I think at that point. Sherry and I met um, in all the wrong places doing all the wrong things. Anyway, so we, we started going out and we hit it off pretty good. And uh, we got married three years ago. He had told me about his, uh, his Christianity and at first I thought, wow, it's really kind of too late for me to back out of this whole thing. Um, but... I think she was freaked out the first couple times that I definitely. talked to her about it. He talked about it and how he used to go to church in Augusta and how they kind of had a falling out and he wasn't going back there. and but how he missed it and, and was looking for something to make himself whole again. I was, I was always really good at talking about what I should be doing. God never really left me um, as much as I left him, which is, so I, I was always good at saying, well, we really should be doing this and we should be doing that. And I, I would talk to her about um, the Lord. But I think what she realized also was as whacked out as I was in terms of you're here, but you're talking about being over here. The ideas that I had, and the and the thing, the way I put it to her w was a way that um, she'd never heard it that way before. She never actually heard the whole somebody actually loves you. Um, my profession is I'm an event planner, and I work for the University of Southern Maine in Portland. One day I get a call from Glenn Petruzzi, who uh, is trying this startup church, the Casco Bay uh, Church of Christ here in Portland and he needs to rent some space for their weekly services. So uh, we did some negotiating, we came up with a contract and they were in one of our rooms every week. And then, we, you know, we were living together, of course, and, and uh, she used to get this phone call, um, like on Sunday mornings, we'd be lying there in bed. Every single week there was some sort of problem. Um, you know, the room wasn't unlocked, or the air conditioning wasn't on, or the AV equipment wasn't working. Um, so every Sunday, poor Glenn would call me and let me know what the problem was, and then I'd make some phone calls and fix it. But it happened every single Sunday. What is this group that you're talking about? Uh, talking to. And I went, oh, you know, it's this church that rents from me. And he goes, what church? And I was like, oh, you know what? You might be interested in this. It's a church of Christ. So he was like, hmm. I said, well, what's the church group? He said, well, it's, it's some Church of Christ thing. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is not good. Because I used to attend um, the Augusta Church of Christ uh, for, for years. So I said, well, that's, there's no such thing as coincidence anyway. And that, so we talked about that. And, and we agreed that, why don't we give that a shot? Um, long story short, we went. Um, and immediately, I didn't like it immediately, 
you liked Glenn right off the bat. I was freaked out because somebody came out with a guitar. We started going to church, and like Jim said, we uh, you know we were kind of going, and then we weren't going, and then we were going, and we weren't going, and um, you know through this whole thing, you know we're still drinking and smoking and going out and kind of feeling our way through the world, and um, finally. We were sitting around one night, and um, I did actually say to Jim, you know, okay, you keep talking about this whole church thing, but you don't do it, and I, I don't get it. You know, put up or shut up. You know, what are we going to do? If, if we're going to do it, let's do it. If not, I don't want to hear about it anymore. I kept saying that, uh, you know, nothing changes unless something changes. And, um, and put up or shut up. Yeah, and I used to hate that one. <laughs> I used to hate that one. It's like, how dare you? That's my line. I'm supposed to use that. But uh, so one night we were sitting here, and uh, I knew where I needed to be. I, I knew where I needed to be. It was just trying to trying to get used to the light again. I, I was worried about doing that waffling thing. You know, I either wanted to be committed or not committed. You know, what are we going to do? So um, September twenty second of two thousand thirteen, we put down the drinks, put down the cigarettes, and decided, okay, this is it, we're gonna do this. So I quit that and we quit smoking, and, which are all nice things to quit, but the big thing was that we dedicated that night, I believe, we dedicated ourselves to the idea that um, we need to be fixed, we can't do it, we know who can. And so we went back with a purpose. And granted, I had never cracked a Bible open at that point. This was only, you know, seven or eight, seven or eight months ago, and I never even cracked a Bible open. And we started studying, and immediately, um, you know, they started showing me some verses, and they started talking about God's love, too, just like Jim was. And I was thinking, huh, maybe there is something to this whole God loves me thing. You know, what's that all about? And, you know, immediately they started showing me verses. It made sense. And I love... Um I love being um, I like being not scared uh, anymore. Three o'clock in the morning was the worst time for a person who knows who the Lord is but isn't where the Lord is, you know I mean uh, because you can fool yourself and everybody at, at a bar with a couple drinks or you can run fast enough in your life to be just that far ahead of the train wreck. But three o'clock in the morning is God's time to go, uh, I'm still here, what's up with you? And what, where would you be right now? You know, where would you be right now without me? You know, repent and be baptized. Uh, you know, you can't get more straightforward than that. So. Uh, we studied for a while and I was baptized on November 30th of 2013 and Jim was recommitted the next day. Mm -hmm. So that's our story. Actually, what we did, it, I want to say one thing, we, we didn't like say, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to come in here and we're going to, we didn't do that. What we did do is we allowed ourselves to be changed. It's as simple as that. We gave up, you know, we laid down the arms and said, that's enough, and, mm. and God is great. We're Jim and Sherry from Portland, Maine, and we're here to tell you that with God, everything, everything is, is possible. possible.